Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Miser Money G. Yes, it is Christmas this week. Yes, Christmas is this Friday, and of course, that's the reason I got my Santa hat on, because I'm in the spirit move. You gotta be in something after the crazy-ass year we had in 2020, and of course, this is my favorite time of the year, because, because I get to make my favorite videos my best of list, my best top 10, and my top 5 worst horror movies of 2020. <laughs> now, despite the crazy ass year we had in trying to watch movies because of COVID-19, I was able to see a, still able to see a whole bunch of movies uh, throughout the year. I did see some movies that were played in theaters before the theater shut down back in March, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of movies that we wanted to see did not come out. They will come out next year or in 2022. However, I did be able to come up with a list of my top 10 best and my top 5 worst horror movies of 2020. Now, I always like to do the bad news first, so we're going to start off with my top 5 worst horror movies of 2020. <laughs> now, for the first time ever, I'm actually going to include in my top 10, in my top videos, some highly recommended and some highly disrecommended horror movies. So we're going to start off with, uh, since we're starting off with the top five worst horror pictures, so I'm going to give you two of my disrecommended horror movies that came out this year. And we're going to start off with the horror movie called Body Cam. Now, Body Cam was a 2020 horror picture that was directed by Malik Vatal that starred hip-hop star uh, M, um, oh boy, <laughs> Mary J. Bloss. <laughs> I finally got that out. Uh... Basically, it was a supernatural horror picture where she stars as a cop that's investigating um, a police officer that gets that one of their officers is brutally murdered, and we see it having supernatural elements into it. And while I did like some of the body kills, the film was very boring. A lot of scenes happened and nothing happened. Uh, Mary J. Bluff is okay, but no one really was that good. It was drag scenes, drag on and on and on and on. Oh, it's a terrible, terrible horror picture. Not one of my top five because there are five other films worse than this one, but definitely I would disrecommend Body Cam. My next disrecommendation for <laughs> disrecommendation, <laughs> oh boy, that's a word for you. Uh, it's another film that came out this year called Dreamcatcher with a K. This was directed by Carrie Harris. Now, you'd actually be surprised, but this movie starred Lynn Shay, and I was pretty uh, interested in seeing this film. But unfortunately, this film, unlike most other films that came out this year, uh, you know, we actually seen this plot before. Bad things happen in secluded house, a tenant lives in the same house. And crazy sin ensues, and that's basically what we got here in Dreamcatcher. Now, I thought we, uh, we you know, we had a very bad opening in the film. Uh, I thought Lynn Shea was good, but, you know, just very boring. Not much happens. We have a very lackluster ending that happens at the end of the film. And so there you have it. The uh, very disinteresting film, Dreamcatcher, with a K. <laughs> and now, here we are. Let us get started with my top five worst horror pictures of 2020. Here we go, let's get started. All right, coming in at number five, we have The Turning, which was a supernatural film, was directed by Florida Sigma Monti. Written by Carrie Haynes and Chad Hayes. It is a supposed to have been a modern adaptation of the 1898 ghost story, The Turning of the Screw. It actually starred uh, Mackenzie Davis and uh, Will, Will uh, Finn Willard from Stranger Things and Brooklyn, and Brooklyn Pierce. Now, um, I actually have to get credit because I thought Brooklyn Pierce was pretty good in this particular film, and uh, I also love Mackenzie Davis. But the film was very boring. It had a nice setting. The house had a nice gothic setting. I thought it was very well filmed. We had some decent acting, but that goddamn ending that took place, oh my god, ruined the whole film whatsoever. Ooh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Coming at number five is The Turning. Now, coming in at number four is You Should Have Left. 
It is a 2020 American psychological horror film. It was directed, written and directed by David Kipp. Based upon the same name by Daniel Kelman. And actually starred Kevin Bacon and Amanda Siegfried. Now, I thought this was going to be a pretty good film. But one of the huge problems I have with it is that you have Kevin Bacon, who's almost 60 to 70 years old. And Amanda Siegfried, who's young. And you just could not get the fact that they're a happily married couple. The fact that nothing happens to take place, we have scene after scene. It's a pretty good setup, though. I actually did love the setup. I actually thought it was going to be a decent film, but it was very boring. Uh, a lot of scenes didn't make place. The film wasn't even scary. We have some several bad, cheap jump scares. I know some people actually liked the film, but I did not like the film. So coming in at number four, you should have left. Put it this way, you should have not seen this film. <laughs> Three. Coming in at number three, no one should be surprised about this. It is Fantasy Island or Blumhouse Fantasy Island, another supernatural horror film that was written and directed by Jeff Wadlow. Uh, the film starred Michael Pena, Maggie Q, Lucy Hale. Now, I have no problems with trying to do a horror version of the 1970s film Fantasy Island. I actually thought this would have been a good way. But unfortunately, once again, because this was PG-13, Oh boy, we got this very digitally not unbelievable um, people getting shot, and we see this black shit coming out from them instead of actual blood. Uh, we find out the true purpose of why everyone's there on the island. I thought that was uh, a bit redundant. I did like Maggie Q's performance. I thought she was the best one out of all the people that are going into the island. Uh, we have these two brothers that really serve no purpose other than to try to make some dumb jokes in the film. And then, of course, we, we get that nice ending in the film that uh, people who only know the original show what get that particular plot of the, uh, at the end of the movie. But coming at number three, Fantasy Island. Try again, Jason. Coming in at number two is another remake, or what you could call a reboot, is The Grudge. <laughs> this was written and directed by Nicholas Pincy. I think I pronounced his name right. It was actually produced by Sam Rainey. He actually had a hand in this one. Uh, it is a remake to the original 2002 Japanese horror film, On War The Grudge. Um, but... As the film begins, we wind up that this is actually not a reboot. It's actually a side sequel that takes place before and during the events of the 2004 film at its direct sequels. And it was the fourth installment of the Grudge series. Now, this film starred Andrew Risenborough, uh, Demon Birch, uh, John Ho, Betty Giplin, and Lin Shea. Now, we do get some nice practical effects. And I like some of the aspects that they tried to do with this particular version of The Grudge. Uh, there's one particular story that I believe is John Joe and Betty Giplin's ca character. If I remember that correct, uh, remember that scene correctly, I actually thought that was the best out of all the events that took place in the show. But once again, I thought Angela Riseborough's character was, was flat. And uh, she's a pretty good actress, but in this particular story, I kind of blame more of the script than her acting because she's flat, she's dull, we really don't get that much from her. And of course, uh, some of the scares that we see in The Grudge that made The Grudge great, it's just terrible here. It really don't get any good real focusing when we actually see the actual image of Samara. I mean, not Samara, whatever, I forget, is that? No. Well, getting my uh, movies confused. Uh, but yeah, that's right. Yeah, Samara. That guy was right. Yeah, we don't get an actual uh, good image of Samara or whoever is supposed to be doing the grudge thing. But, oh, well, what are you going to do? So, coming in at number two is The Grudge 2020. One. And so, my number one worst horror movie of 2020 I'm pretty sure you might guess this, but it is Brahms The Boy 2. Now, I believe this is the second film that I reviewed on my channel that I've never given any stars to whatsoever, any gold coins whatsoever. This film was terrible. It was horrible. Uh, it's a 2020 supernatural horror film that starred Kate Holmes and Ralph Emerson. It was directed by William Bell Trent. Uh, William Bent, uh, by William Brent Bell. I'll get the name right. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really like the first boy. 
uh, it has some good. I like the fact that they actually tried to do something different, and they didn't try to put a supernatural spin on it based upon what we saw at the events of the end of The Boy. But The Boy 2 decided not to go that route. They decided to try to change the whole continuity of what made The Boy an actual somewhat of a decent horror movie. This one right here, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Any sense? Uh, we see that this. Uh, we see Katie Holmes' character and her son after a trauma, after something, uh, an event that takes place in their home. The boy doesn't speak. They move into a house that's near the home where Brahms grew up at. He finds the porcelain doll of the boy. Uh, we think that that the actual Brahm is still alive, but they decide to change the whole continuity of the whole show, of the whole movie, and it's just flat, flat. Dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> it makes no sense. And I don't even want to talk about the ending. So my worst horror film of 2020 is Brahms, The Boy 2. And so there you have it. Those are my five worst horror films of 2020. I'm pretty sure you might not agree with my list. But these are my opinions and minds only. You can agree or disagree because that's what we all do here. So what do you think are your worst horror pictures of 2020? Do you agree with my list? You can actually probably have something there similar to mine or you might disagree. That's what we all do. So leave your comments in the comment section below and tell me what are your worst horror films of 2020 so once again that's my video for the day guys hope you did enjoy it and please if you did please give it a thumbs up because it does help out with that youtube algorithm also if you're new here please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell that way you'll be notified anytime when i put up new videos such as this one and again uh look out for my top 10 best horror films coming up soon once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G, and always remember that horror rules! <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. I'm out.